Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's time to grab that beach cart loaded up with rigs and bloods and rods and reels and sand spikes, hit those secret and not so secret riverbanks. Doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing, sunny or foggy, it's those sedges where I would like to be on March 1st. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine and five days from now saltwater anglers in New Jersey will be back at it again along those riverbanks, the bulkheads and the sedges for an early season score. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That is the opening day, Tuesday, March 1st for striped bass in the back, the outback striped bass fishery. Oh, and winter flounder as well. Big or small really doesn't matter because the first striper of the season is a sight to behold when fishing with friends and family. And of course, it's all about the bloodworms. And that's both the winter flounder fishery for the central North Jersey coast, as well as striped bass in the back throughout the entire Garden State. For more details on that, in particular with striped bass. Pick up the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It will hit newsstands sometime this week. You subscribers should get it by the weekend. And in there, look for Nick Konachewski's article, The Tides of March, on page 12. He puts a good deal of focus on the rare, but I expect similar, outstanding early season striped bass reports from the Toms, from the Mullica, from the Great Egg, probably along the rare in some place, and the Hackensack in North Jersey as well, as Back Bay Striper Fishing opens here on March 1st. Now, while bloodworms on circle hooks has been a, well, the, bloodworms have been a traditional way of catching striped bass going back for as long as I can remember. Circle hooks now in place as far as the regulatory rule. You have to use circle hooks when you're using natural baits. But as we start the season with the colder water and those stripers get up on the flats to warm up and to find the warmer water, that's where the blood worms are going to take effect. But I, I'm just about guaranteeing it. Depending on the piece of water you're working next week, you could probably run some soft plastics as well on a nice slow retrieve. The fish are gonna be on the smaller side they're the ones that are going to be more active to start, but there are some bigger fish in the back as well that wintered over. But finally, as of March 1st, it's going to be legal to target striped bass west of the coal regs in New Jersey, and that's all that matters to so many of us. I did also mention winter flounder, not so much for South Jersey, certainly not Atlantic or Cape May County, but from Long Beach Island North, for sure winter flounder. I'm thinking around the Causeway Bridge, uh, some of the piers and bulkheads in Barnegat Bay, up, at, up to the Maniloking Bridge area, and of course back on the Navasink, some places on the Raritan, and of course the L Street Pier right there in Belmar, Bobby Matthews and Fisherman's Den. That crew has been looking forward to the start of winter flounder. So if you can find some nice deep water near a bulkhead or a pier, load up a chum pot to assist you with that. Obviously, it's different when you're on the boat, but if you're deep water right near the bulkhead, you can toss that chum pot out and make sure you put those bloodworm baits just down tide when you're casting, just down tide of the chum pot. That's going to be the most effective. Of course, you're using big bloodworms and whole bloodworms on the bait holder style circle hooks for striped bass, and you're going to be using smaller pieces, those Chesterfield style rigs uh, on the winter flounder. Keep in mind, Tog in New Jersey would go on a month-long hiatus as well at the end of the day on Monday. It is closed for the month of March. We'll be back at it again in April. A lot of the head boats and charter boats that gear up for Tog will be back in action in April. Until then, for the month of March, you can expect those head boats and the boats that are still sailing to go out in search of ling, some cod, hit those offshore wrecks for jumbo porgies, and yeah, there's a couple of weak fish in the mix there as well. Now in Delaware, you've got that four tog at 16 inch minimum size, it's still in play. But word out of ports in Lewis in Indian River Inlet, very, very quiet. In fact, field editor Eric Burnley, he writes in the March edition in our report section that he expects a few more boats to be back in to the tog action in March on some of those nicer days. 
But until then, it's primarily white perch in the back. Spots like Woodland Beach, Broadkill River as well. Of course, there's plenty of white perch throughout the state of New Jersey in those salty rivers, those brackish rivers in some of those locations. Uh, as of Tuesday, those bloodworm baits though, that guys are using the smaller pieces for uh, some white perch. Again, they're gonna be using those circle hooks in hopes of a striper. By the way, folks have been asking me about those bait holder style circle hooks that I mentioned in last week's video forecast. Well, I heard from Greg Kudnick at Fisherman's Headquarters in Ship Bottom that he's got those uh, striper approved Eagle Claw laser sharp bait holder style circle hooks. I also spoke to Dennis at Hook House in Tom's River. He said, yeah, I got a few of them. So a lot of shops are hoping to get more. If any of the shops let me know that they've got those Eagle Claw laser sharp bait holder style circle hooks with the barbs along the shank to hold those blood worms in place. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know. And as soon as I find out any other manufacturers coming to the table to hold those dollar a piece blood worms in place, I'll let you know that as well. Now, speaking of striped bass, the upcoming hearings on Amendment 7 to the Fishery Management Plan for striped bass are scheduled in March. Now, keep in mind, this is not about a regulatory change on striped bass this season. 2022 is set in stone. But what they're looking at is a long-range goal of rebuilding striped bass. So the public comment document that's out on the, uh, on the market right now that you can get at the ASMFC.org, that's their website, this is talking about the future, 2023 and beyond. So take a look at those, uh, those meetings coming up. Delaware's webinar hearing will be held on Thursday, March 10th. New Jersey and Pennsylvania will combine for a webinar together on Monday, March 14th. In New York, they're meeting in person. How about that? That's gonna be Wednesday, March 16th. Now, topics for discussion include these management triggers, uh, which are setting different uh, statistical formulas for uh, spawning stock, biomass, mortality, all kinds of things. It's very complex. Hopefully, you'll get a better understanding of this as I do when we attend those public hearings. The other thing they're talking about are the time and area closures, shutting down periods uh, and areas of striped bass in the future for a couple of weeks at a time. Again, get all the details on that at asmfc.org. As for the status of summer flounder and black sea bass, I've been talking about it a while, but the next meeting of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council is next Thursday, March 3rd. That too looks like it's going to be a webinar uh, I will, I imagine I'll be sitting in watching that webinar from the, uh, the Atlantic City Boat Show, which is going on next week. More on that, the Atlantic City Boat Show, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and also, the winners from this past weekend's Boat Show and the Philly Show. Yeah, we had some winners at the shows this past weekend. That's where people are asking me, what's the deal with Fluke? Again, we'll know more next Thursday, March 3rd. Not sure if we're going to know all the answers but I will know more. More on the winners and some events coming up this weekend, but first, let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it's kind of a foggy, rainy day here, and to be honest, I'm still recovering a little bit from the great scooter incident of 2022 at the Philly Fishing Show. Now, Jim will have more on that in a minute, but what I really want to talk about is some of the ice up here. You know, all during the show, people were asking me, George, how's the ice in the Poconos? Well, guys, I'm going to tell you, it's day by day up here. You know, the, the ice has been waning for the past few days. We had some warm days, obviously some rain today, and that's going to put a hurting on our hard water fishing. If you're out like these guys, these hardcore guys, be super careful. You know, this ice could give way at any day, and it's going to be iffy as you go throughout the lake. So just be careful if you're going to head out. Now, a couple of folks that have been successful on the ice, we have my good friend Jay Batcha. He's finding some safe ice way up north. He's hitting those ponds and those lakes way up where the elevations are highest and up further north in the state. You're going to find in some of that better ice in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But also, uh, Will Grouper was out with young Isabel. Bell grouper and they were on that going on that Lake Wall and Palm Pack getting into some really nice that pickerel. Now you know guys you'd think pickerel for no, is not a game fish but I'll tell you what for a young lady like Isabel that thing could have been a 50 inch muskie. It's really a good thing and they're fun to catch too. So don't don't discount that and great work Isabel. Thank you. Now also we talk about that the pickerel pros like Jen Wong. Yeah he was out there in North Jersey hitting those rivers and he was working a, 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 a suspension um, 
suspending shadow wrap. Now that's a, like kind of a crankbait working a, a jerkbait style. He said a couple of twitches, long pause was getting the work done. So a couple of nice pickle for Jen as well. And finally, I wanted to wrap up on the Delaware River. You know, you, you can't miss that this time of year. Everybody's getting psyched up. We have a lot of fishing coming. The shad run is coming in a couple of weeks. But uh, my good friend Tim Keeper, uh, the river guide on the Delaware River, was out with Eric Fisser. Yeah, that's that shad guy. And they went out and tested the waters to see what's biting out there on the Delaware. And lo and behold, they did find themselves some nice walleye. So they found the recipe for that. Fishing is starting to pick up, guys. So I want you to get out, do a little fish and be safe wheels up and go get on them guys from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy oh, wheels up oh boy he opened it up listen here's the story never saw this before in my entire life of doing outdoor shows in the state of new jersey if you've gone to a show and you're there for the opening you know what it's like everybody's packed in after they've gotten their tickets they're waiting for the doors to open so for all of us that are doing the show inside we're, we're looking at this giant crowd getting ready to bull rush us well at the philadelphia fishing show over the weekend the fisherman magazine was in the very first booth so i had a clear view of everybody coming in so all of a sudden the doors open up and George and I have our cups of coffee. We're ready to go. We've got all the subscriptions blanks, the, the blanks out. I've got the table set up, three tables, magazines underneath, credit card machine, cash box. We're set to go. When out of the pack, Bob the Bucktail guy, used to sell bucktails over there at Harry's Army and Navy. He and his brother come shooting out of the pack in motor scooters. They're not walking around as much anymore. That motor scooter starts bearing down on our table. All of a sudden, all at once, it's like the, a, a boat ran aground. Boom! The table knocks out. I see the table go up in the air. Everything falls off the table. Coffee flies everywhere. Bob, instead of hitting the brakes, he got panicky and he hit the gas again. And that scooter went through the table and all the tables knocked down. And then everything's flying all over the place. So I apologize if I didn't get to your subscription in the first 10 minutes on Friday at the Philadelphia Fishing Show, but we were in a crisis situation. Don't worry, everybody's safe. What did happen is later on after that, we saw so many great people and they signed up for the Fisherman Magazine. Oh, and they also signed up for the free e-newsletter and that entitled them to a contest over the weekend. Congratulations to Carlos Ramos of Philly also, Owen Ballweg of Point Pleasant. They were the winners of our weekend drawing this past weekend at the New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo and at the Philadelphia Show. You guys just won a Sterling Wide Tracker. Carlos dropped off uh, his subscription at the Philadelphia Show. Owen was out there in New Jersey. We will be doing this again. Your next shot to win a Sterling Wide Tracker will come next week at the Atlantic City Boat Show. Get your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine to qualify. If you don't want to reach into your pocket, you can also just sign up for our free newsletter while you're there for a shot to win. Uh, either way, we're going to be drawing a winner at the end of the Atlantic City Boat Show next week. Now, the seminars return to Atlantic City. They'll be at the convention center all week, Wednesday through Sunday, March 2nd through the 6th. Those how-to sessions are presented by all of us at the Fisherman Magazine, also our friends at the Recreational Fishing Alliance, and the folks from Goose Hummock. If you're going to get tickets for the Atlantic City Boat Show, do so early. Do it online. I believe that's where they're going to be doing the ticket sales. Online at acboatshow.com. And if you're riding in a mo motor scooter there on the event floor, just be careful. This weekend coming up, you have the 26th Annual Fishing Flea Market and Fishing Collectible Show. That's sponsored by Ocean Fire Company Number 1. It's being held at the Antrim School. That's at 401 Niblick Street in Point Pleasant Beach. That's going to be from 8.30 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. And entry is just $3. You can find out more information inside that March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Or it should be in the February edition as well. So if you've got the February edition at home, look for that info. For you freshwater fisheries guys, the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife is holding a freshwater forum. A freshwater fisheries forum this Saturday, August 26th. 10 a.m. That's going to be online. Topics include warm water uh, fish, also uh, bass tournament results, the skillful anglers program, and also all the uh, different updates and variable regulatory stuff that you need to know. All kinds of great discussion. You can dial in at 312-757-3121. Use access code 172 205 
565. Isn't this great, all these webinars with the private access and the access codes? Uh, the uh, whole public concept of government has gone out the window. Finally, don't forget to sign up for the free angler registry. It's required in the state of New Jersey if you're fishing in marine waters. So if you're going to go out striper fishing on Tuesday, make sure you go get your free registry. It's free, but if you get busted without it, it's a $25 fine the first time, then it's $50 after. After that, if you get busted, you're just a moron. I'm sorry. Go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. It's free and we need that data. So go, please sign up for the free registry. Get more information on regulation actions in the Garden State in the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I talk about those fines for not being registered. I also talked to Captain or Deputy Chief Jason Snellbaker for this month's edition on that striper poaching dealio that was up there on the Raritan last uh, fall. Jason tells me too that they're going to be bringing more enforcement into the Raritan this spring, so be on the lookout for that. Infor important information though for you to know before that March 1st opener. Hopefully I'll have some striped bass reports for you in next week's video forecast that we'll be doing at the Atlantic City Boat Show. We'll have about 24 hours of striped bass reports under my belt. I know some folks looking to cash in at Absecon Bay Saltwater Sportsman or Absecon Bay Sportsman Center there in Absecon. Some of the other tackle shops too have some special deals for guys who register the first keeper slot fish of the 2022 season. So stop into your local tackle shop and see what's going on. I'm going to leave you this week with a little video that you've seen before. Uh, it's from a couple of years ago. Uh, for you, so you striper sharpies. We talk about the worm ball. I know this is a pricey rig, but it is very effective for, for spring stripers. Matt Calabria, uh, who stops into the tackle box up there in Hazlitt all the time, he did this a couple of years, uh, years ago. So watch this again. This is the worm ball rig that he uses to catch so many stripers up there on the rare in, in the spring. Just keep in mind the hook that Matt is showing you is a bait holder style J hook. Don't forget, if you're using natural baits like bloodworms or clams, you're going to have to use a circle hook. So make sure you adhere to that new circle hook regulation. Catch them up and I'll see you in Atlantic City or one of my favorite spots along a salty river in the Garden State. All right, here I'm making a video and showing you guys how I'm um, baiting my worm rig. So I start off with a 5-0 bait holder, 30-pound fluoro, somewhere around 2-foot leader. So I'm going to start off with a few sandworms here. I'm just barely hooking them just to get them onto the point before I start threading them together. So there's three sandworms. Take a little bit of clam tie. Start your initial ball. Just start kind of slowly wrapping them on the hook. Nice and loose. Okay, leave yourself a little bit of tag end. And then I'm taking about three more blood worms and I'm just laying them on the top like this. Okay, continue with the clam tie. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so this is what I've been using every night and it's been just doing justice for me. And then what I've been doing to kick it up a notch is taking some of this stuff right here. This is Finescence, the clam scent. And you just, when you're ready to fish, crack the top open, drop a couple droplets on that bad boy, and cast it out. And if you're fishing every day like me, keep this stuff together. This is, you can get two, three days out of this. I can show you a couple of rigs from last night. So... This is great. Just put a couple worms on top of this and just keep going. Ready to go fishing. All right? Fish your flag.
Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.